Hello and uh, welcome to Schneider Electric Exchange webinar on uh, power of sustainable ecosystem. My name is Manish Kumar. I'm Senior Vice President for Digital Buildings at Schneider Electric, uh, helping customers build healthier buildings, sustainable building, and efficient buildings. And today we are going to explore how we can build a more sustainable and efficient uh, environment. So I have with me three esteemed guests. Uh, I would like to introduce Mr. Xavier Hu, who is Global Head of Real Estate, Environment and Safety. Welcome, morning, Xavier. Uh, Harvey Kure, who is our Chief Digital Officer. Welcome, Harvey. Hi, Manish. And we have uh, John Mason, who is Chief Commercial Officer of Predictive Layer. Welcome, John, to the webinar. Thank you, Manish. So, gentlemen, welcome uh, to the webinar. Uh, Thanks, for I was Thanks for having us, Manish. Thank Thanks, you. Manish. So first I want to start with the world. The world is becoming more electric. Uh, if I see the facts, I see by 2040, we are going to increase the consumption of electricity by 60%. 60%. And by 2040, the electrical vehicle car stock is going to increase again to 30%. And if you look at decentralized energy, by 2050 is going to be 30%, uh, 50%. Uh, of the energy production. So world is becoming definitely more electric. If we also look at digital, world is going to become more digital as well in terms of number of connected devices and amount of data these devices are generating. We're going to have a five-fold increase in the next five years in terms of amount of data that devices are going to generate. So we're really at the crossroad of digital as well as a more electrical world. I think the question is, how do we create a better sustainable world using digital and new technologies of energy available to us? And I think at the crossroad of this is digital ecosystems because I don't think as a company, one company can solve these problems. These are complex problems. And today we are going to discuss how we can leverage the ecosystem and the power of ecosystem together to solve this problem. I'm going to start with you, Xavier. You are head of safety, environment, and real estate. How do you see sustainability and how you're tackling the problem of sustainability? Sure. Thanks, Manish. Uh, thanks for the introduction and for having me here. So clearly, uh, if we look back to the Climate Week uh, discussions which happened in New York earlier this year, uh, clearly we have a decade uh, ahead of us, 2020, 2030, which has to be the decade of climate. You know, that's, there's no uh, turning point. Biodiversity, climate have to be at the forefront of the, these agendas. And what does that mean? That means we have to be carbon neutral very soon and we need to halve carbon emission yep. in the next 10 to 15 years. That, that's really massive. The good news is, the good news is in buildings and infrastructure which represent 70% of the carbon emission, we have huge opportunities which are not tapped, untapped today. 79% in industries and infrastructure and 82% in buildings. So that means there is a huge opportunity for us collectively to be efficient, which is the first thing we have to do. And then to decarbonize what remains in terms of the energy which has to be used, the electric which has to be used. If we look at our Schneider Electric, the way we've been quantifying that ability of technology to decarbonize the buildings, in 2018 alone, we've mm -hmm. been able to avoid 51 million tons of CO2 to be emitted in the atmosphere compared to the year before, meaning which when we retrofit existing assets, when we make current buildings more efficient, we can really reduce the quantity of CO2 emitted in the atmosphere. So there's a huge opportunity. There's a huge business uh, relevance for companies like us in the ecosystem which is open, on which we're going to have discussions today, to, to be a solution to the climate challenges which we have. Savi, that, that's a great point. You said there is a huge amount of opportunity, right? Uh, Harvey, picking your mind, we see that there is a huge sort of uh, you know need for us as a business is to continue to grow and in the world to continue to have a industrial growth. How do we find the balance using the technology to make sure that we have the right balance between growth and environmental impact as well? Right? Sure, on, 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 I, as uh, Xavier mentioned, uh, uh, you know, there's a huge dilemma around resource and resource efficiency. Yeah. Right? I mean, we're going to consume, I think, a little less than. Uh, to Earth's uh, worth of resource in 2019. So, so you can look at it from a number of angles, right? Uh, uh, you can look at it from the, the perspective of 
decarbonation, from the perspective of electrification. You can also look at it from the perspective of digital. Yeah. Um, look at it as actually a very interesting data science problem, right? And then you look at it as a data science problem and, and try to think, you know, what are the algorithm? What are the, how can you optimize uh, uh, um, uh, your energy consumption? How do you make, uh, um, how do you become more targeted, whether it's in a building, which you yeah. know very well, in a data center, uh, 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 in a factory plant and so forth. So I, I, I like this idea of, uh, looking at essentially efficiency as, as, a, as a data science problem. And, and one of, uh, in order to do so, I mean, nobody, nobody can basically crunch such an algorithm, such a monstrous problem by itself, right? That's where you need to harness the, uh, uh, the power of an ecosystem. And, and that's where we work with, uh, with our partners in order to, to define, okay, how can we break down that, that super complex problem into smaller pieces and eat all those small pieces one at a time, right? With, with our partners. So it's really this combination of, of looking at it from the angle of, of a data science problem and then harnessing the power of an ecosystem mm -hmm. in order to uh, to make it happen. Harvey, you, you well said, you know, it's a it's a opportunity that we have with technology and data science uh, can help us solve the problem. A and John, uh, uh, I'm going to pick your field. You are coming from the field of AI. Uh, can you, you know, sort of throw some light on how you are s using artificial intelligence to shape the future and help customers solve some of these difficult problems? Thanks, so much. Great, great introduction to the topic of how do we use all of this data that, that these devices are throwing off and that people are, are creating. We're, we're creating you know, more data in the last two years than, than we have in the whole of history up to that point. Is it? So there's amazing. a mass of data out there. The problem now is how do we actually use, use that it. data to uh, create a more efficient future for, for ourselves, for the planet. And Predictive Layer was created just over four years ago in Switzerland. Um, and we, we have a mix of skilled mathematicians and IT specialists. And the reason we have that mix is because the, we need to be able to connect to different sources of data within our clients' own historical data in their ERP systems, in their CRM systems, etc. But also then complement that with external data, different sources of weather data, uh, vacation calendars, uh, market data coming from different sources. And then our, our real intellectual property is a set of AI machine learning algorithms that will then look through many thousands of combinations of all those different variables to try to find automatically the most relevant correlations to predict a future outcome more accurately. Yep. And that's that's what we started doing first in the energy market uh, a few years ago to predict demand, supply and price of electricity for some of our clients. A company like ArcelorMittal, uh, largest steel producer in Europe, has been working with us for over three years now to use that to help them save money on their energy, uh, but also to predict production of steel bars in various countries and even to help set their sales price. So it's, it, it can be used in different ways to different uh, targets that you're trying to predict, but the key is being able to connect all those data sources and then have the AI do the hard work of finding the correlations to predict the future more accurately. Yeah. Sure. Um, so that's where we are very pleased to work with Schneider Electric. It's very complementary in a way to, to the great products and solutions that you have to try to bring that layer of intelligence on top of the uh, the systems and the platform that you have. I always felt that it was interesting, right? That that you have an interesting convergence between IoT, which is all about creating data from the real world, yep. and from AI, which is all yes. about creating insight on actions, yes. right? Yes. From that data. So I think it's it's yes. actually when you look at it, there's an incredible uh, uh, convergence, right? And yep. not, it's not just AI in isolation. It's not just IoT, mm -hmm. and then what do you do with all that, right? You're gonna yep. have a lot of amounts of data, none of them being used. Yep. It's how you have those two like mega trends uh, uh, converging and at the, the, the 
connection between those two trends, you really yes. can do very interesting yeah, things. Yeah, and actually that's where the, the role of a customer actually comes in, because they have the real domain expertise, right? So you've got all this data that's being generated, you've got some smart algorithms that can look for correlations, but then it's the customer's domain expertise in their industry, in their company, that is needed to actually figure out what is it that you can cre that you can forecast more accurately mm. that creates true value mm. for, for them and for their customers. Uh, so that's that's usually the the crux of the question. Yeah. Is if I can how, how if you can rebound that? on this, if you allow me, uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, pulling the string, which uh, Hervé and, and Jean, you you allowed me to to, to pull, which is. But when we talk circular economy, which makes the assets mm -hmm. of Schneider Electric and our customers mm -hmm. last longer, being repaired, taken back, refurbished, mm -hmm. retrofitted. Yeah. As Hervé was mentioning, uh, whenever those objects get connected, we have real-time information of how these objects in the field are behaving. Mm -hmm. What is the right time for sending a preventative maintenance, yeah. yes. a service engineer? Absolutely. What is the time to make the retrofit of that equipment to make it more efficient? Yeah. Yeah. When is the end of life of the equipment coming? So again, as you said, there is a really a uh, a, a dual effect where the, the real world, the physical world, gets yep. you know enhanced Sometimes. with that technology and vice versa. The technology without the ability yep. of the supply chain to take back, to send engineers, will not be as maximum. Yep. So we really see that nexus Very good uh, really uh, yeah. well depicted. Exactly, and I think that's really the convergence. You know, that's really, I think what happened, what really took a lot of momentum over the last three years, right? We had yeah. a lot of digital at the time, you know, five years ago mm -hmm. with mobile phone and social yes. media, etc. But now, I mean, digital is impacting the real yeah. world. Right? That's really what makes it exciting. And, and Harvey, you said right, and you know, very good examples that AI has a meaningful impact now today. Yes. But I think what I picked up some common theme is it requires far more collaboration among different mm -hmm stakeholders, whether it's a different data set coming from different partners or yeah. customers. Yeah. And I think, Harvey, you touched earlier is the, the power of collaboration and communities. And I know you have launched Schneider Electric Exchange as a open business platform, ecosystem platform, where the idea is to bring different stakeholders and they can collaborate and co-innovate and solve these harder problems, right? Would you like to sort of throw some more light on where we are in that journey. Sure, well, you described it very well. <laughs> I give you a, a very good mark for it. But um, I, I, I think really the idea is, yeah, harness, harness the power of the ecosystem. Um, not with necessarily Schneider at the center of it, yes. right? But Schneider as a participant yes. or orchestrating a wider, bigger ecosystem. And the idea is that, you know, we know uh, uh, there's a lot of marketplaces, there's a lot of communities, yeah. right? And, 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 and then you have tons of uh, developer environment. But what we're trying to do with Exchange, which is, we feel a little unique, is sort of converging those three, uh, those three together, right? Yeah. And we like to describe Exchange as collaborate, create, scale, right? So collaborate, a lot of communities, private, public, where you actually start from the problem you're trying to yes. solve. We were sort of touching it before, mm -hmm. I mean, Digital is not anymore just, you know, throwing uh, 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 <laughs> things on Angry Birds or yeah. whatever. It's how you uh, um, how you impact uh, 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 the real world. So we start by actual customer problems, sure. right? And, and we start by your discussion, by your community discussion, by uh, 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 around practical, real world customer problem. Then you know there's a lot of. Uh, uh, um, environment, technical resources, data sets, mm -hmm. uh, 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 API, what have you, so that you can throw people from, from different angles at those problems, right? Yeah. People who look at it from the perspective of a software engineer, people who look at it from the perspective of a data scientist, yeah. and, uh, and try to get to the best answer yeah. to that problem. So that's really how you collaborate, that's really create, and then you can scale, and, and that's where you add mm -hmm. the, the third and last uh, aspect which is okay pick a use case and then make it replicable yep. right and see it whether some, you can uh, 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 really uh, scale beyond that yes and Xavier I, I understand that you have been already able to harness the power of this collaboration platform True. Uh, for ourselves and our customers yeah we'll, we've been able back to what Hervé was mentioning uh, I'm gonna share with you uh, two or three use cases uh, quickly uh, the first one is with a, a startup called Energency where we were able together in through the platform of uh, around exchange to help a, a major chemicals company 
which has been for, for decades and years fine tuning energy efficiency to, to a limit, we could move that limit further and find new ways to be more energy efficient for a gas turbine in their key processes. And over this collaboration through the exchange platform, we were able to help the client Wonderful. get a solution which has been implemented, whose payback is few months. And it's, it's really way uh, we, we see the value of the ecosystem. Another example of that collaboration is in the cybersecurity world. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with Enig Media, uh, a company which is, again, one of those uh, companies around the exchange, partners of Schneider Electric. And they've helped on the cybersecurity space this time invent for a large petrochemicals company, find a best solution, uh, non-intrusive, almost zero latency, less than two milliseconds, ability for you know, protecting the assets of that petrochemical company from a cybersecurity perspective. And I want to close with maybe one of our own one examples example. because real estate uh, is one of the cases and buildings, you know, you lead the building uh, yes. solutions for Schneider. I'm also helping our buildings to be more efficient. And through exchange, we see value in opening the data, which we own through the building systems, which we have yes. to uh, different players around the ecosystem to help us be better, you know, in terms of occupancy, comfort. That's maybe uh, what throws light on some of the use cases, which... Yeah. And yeah, John, having. you have been uh, a very early participant to this exchange community, right? Yes. And you have uh, participated and you have been able to collaborate any example that you s want to share for a great customer success that you have been able to see, both for businesses such as yours, mm -hmm. but also for your customers as well? Yeah, I mean, we've been a partner with Exchange for over a year. Uh, I think we were one of the very first. Um, yeah, we were. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, getting accurate predictions, either you need a crystal ball. <laughs> Unfortunately, we mm. couldn't find our crystal ball. <laughs> yeah. Or you need data yes. and specific use cases with a, with a well-defined target uh, that makes sense for the customer. What we've been able to do through Exchange is, is both find data sets, uh, which is helpful to improve the quality of the forecasts that we can make, but actually probably as a smaller company, more importantly, it's about how do we scale? Yeah. How do we find those use cases with actual clients where we can quickly do a proof of concept within a few weeks, demonstrate value to the customer, within a few weeks move into a live environment and start to deploy at scale. And that's really the beauty of what we now are starting to really see ramp up yeah. through Exchange is that ability to, to scale, find real use cases and bring true value to, to our clients. Um, just last week, I was literally on the, on the phone with an Exchange partner as a potential client that is likely to lead us to a 20,000 euro uh, proof of concept and hopefully more significant revenues beyond that uh, in the space of renewable energy, forecasting wind turbine production um, lends itself very well to the type of algorithms that we can um, use to predict based on weather patterns. Um, uh, vacation calendars uh, also have an impact uh, uh, on the demand side. So it's, it's the type of use case that we'd like to have lots more. Yeah. Um, so yes. we're very keen to work with the exchange team to, to find those use cases and, and really start to ramp up and scale yeah. at industrial levels. And John, those are great examples, great stories. We are not only a company such as you are able to scale and you know develop solutions and bring value but also for our customers who are on exchange as well yes. realize the benefit because you know we said earlier one company cannot solve this problem yeah. so we see a, a great value of collaboration yeah. Harvey you want to add uh, something else to to this I think this sums up perfectly right yeah. what we yeah. were discussing I think the, the I feel the power of of, of uh, exchange is first to be very centered on efficiency and sustainability. It's yep. not, you know, we're not trying to be horizontal across yep. too many things because it has a lot of, at the end of the day, there's value in expertise. Yep. Uh, second, it's really combining those three uh, 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 um, assets that I was mentioning, right? So collaborating, creating, and scaling, and the three together combined is important. The fact that it's a many to many uh, mm. a, a relationship, it's not Schneider at the center, right? On that, we're starting from problems and I yeah. think that's probably the most important thing yeah. is is uh, we really believe that exchange should be a place where you should start with a problem not start with a technology technology yeah. and, and, and have uh, 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 multiple types of people not just developers mm -hmm. or data scientists connecting together on, on, on solving those real world yeah, problems, problems right so yeah no let's uh, yeah. I engage everybody to to visit us at exchange.se.com yeah no, gentlemen, uh, thank you very much. I, if I sum it up, uh, 
we are saying the world is becoming more electric, world is becoming more digital, we have a huge opportunity in front of us to solve the problem, the complex problems of sustainability and efficiency. And the real opportunity for us is bringing those communities and stakeholders together to collaboration and Schneider Electric Exchange is facilitating those conversation and collaboration. So call to all of us, a call of all of you to join us on exchange.se.com and really harness the power of what we have together uh, as a collaboration and solve those problems. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.